Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to Talent Culture's Tea Chat Radio. The world of work is live now on the radio with Megan Ambiro and Kevin W. Grossman because middle initials count. Come down to the radio. Take my hand to the radio. Come on, my favorite song. Welcome, everybody, out there in Talent Culture Tea Chat Show land. It is another Wednesday. It is the 13th of January. Man, already this year is just zooming by. It's 10 a.m. if you're on the West Coast and 1 p.m. if you're on the East Coast. And we're really excited to be there with you, as always, is Kevin W. Grossman and, of course, the lovely and talented Megan M. Bira. Hi, Megan. What say hey, you? Hey, Kevin. How are you? No, I'm good. Doing good. Good. Doing good. Yeah, doing how are you? good over here too. I'm doing well. I'm um yeah. I'm live here from Yale New Haven Hospital in the parking lot <laughs> of all places in my mobile office. Bringing mom for some outpatient surgery. So all is just going all right. I just wanted to be available. I'm being a good daughter today. So that's nothing there wrong you go. with that, right? Nothing yeah. nothing so, at, nothing at all. No. No and I'm hold down on. The only the only the only thing yeah. that is wrong today which is yeah. you're about to tell us you're down there you're down <laughs> there somewhere and I'm up here in Connecticut where it's 30 degrees but at least it's yeah. not Yeah. Well, and at least it's 30 degrees. I mean, I guess I I can't I mean it could I don't know if that if that it even helps you but it could be worse but I'm here in uh <laughs> I'm actually down here in, in in our talent board headquarters at Elaine Orler's place and we are um <laughs> Having a, having a meeting the next two days, and so I'm in sunny San Diego, where it's 55 oh, you. degrees. There That's, you go. Don't rub it 55. in. Don't rub it Mind, in. I won't. I won't. But we've got we've got an exciting show today because we got our good friends from IBM Smarter Workforce is here. One of our guests who we'll introduce in just a minute or two. Um, this is exciting because at the end of last year we did a, a great mini podcast series with with uh, a few different folks um, at IBM as well as some other um, practitioners themselves all about recruitment as marketing and a great theme. And I'm going to actually share yeah. that that tweet right now with everybody. If you have not seen that, it's coming right now in the stream. Oh, nice. I'll share it again later, Look at you. later in the show. Um, oh, and now it's telling me. <laughs> That's funny. Now it's telling you you tweeted too much today. No, it was telling me that it's all right. It's telling me that it was a it's a duplicate tweet, but now it's going out. There we go. All right. So everybody you can see that tweet in the stream. I'll do it again later in the show too. Anyway, really exciting series that you can you can listen to for free. So it's really easy to do and we want to, what yep. we want to do now really quick is thank all of our friends and sponsors that include Smashfly, Career Builder, Workable, TalentWise, PeopleFluent, Smart Search, ISEMS Vizier, and of course uh, our guest of honor today, uh, IBM Smarter Workforce. So we want to thank all of them very much. And we're gonna last week we talked about how to create the ultimate hiring experience, which is a really fun show with Pete Paget and his journey around the U.S. getting hourly jobs. This week we're going to talk about why the best recruitment means smarter workforce marketing. And the fact is we all know today that we're we're all job seekers and perpetual candidates, even if we're currently happily employed. And it's all about candidates are the hiring organizations to lose uh, before they even think about applying for it. Yeah, absolutely. Before they even even apply for a job. So today employers and candidates alike are responsible for creating and marketing their own brand which, again, can give both a symbiotic and differentiating competitive edge. Lots of big words there, but we're excited about the show. It's going to be a great discussion. And, again, um, check out that podcast series when you get a chance. I'll I'll share it again later in the show. If you're listening today, make sure, and you want to participate in the Twitter chat, of course, it's hashtag TCHAT. And you can tweet along now as well as during the second half of the show, which will be on Twitter chat from 1.30 to 2. Eastern Time. So let's introduce our fantastic guest today. 
Well, I am excited to introduce the lovely and talented Abby Uller. She's at A B V Y E U L E R on the Twitters. And luckily, everybody, I've got my iPhone with me right now. So you'll see me in the stream. I'm going to be doing lots of uh, tweeting and shout outs, of course. And, you know, Abby is the talent acquisition evangelist over at IBM Smarter Workforce. She's super cool. Um, I really enjoyed meeting her through that audio uh, podcast series that we did. And, um, you know, she's been with IBM Smarter Workforce um, for, my gosh, how many years? How many years, Almost Abby? Almost 10. Almost 10. That's wow. Good. It's amazing, right? That alone <laughs> deserves <laughs> you a can round do a of lot shout-out. Of years. Absolutely. And I love Abby's background because she's got this really amazing and timely blend of consumer marketing, employment branding, recruitment marketing, and talent acquisition for all the innovation that's happening in our space. So welcome, Abby. I'd love for you to tell us just a little bit more about your background and why you feel so passionate about what you're doing over there at IBM Smarter Workforce. Well, yes. Thanks, guys. And if, if middle initials count, then I'm Abby L. Euler. Abby, yes, they do. So they do I can, I can be, do. so I can be like you guys. I, I'm, I'm an L. So, cool. um, <laughs> well, I, I got, I kind of stumbled upon the HR world um, when I came to Connexa, and it became this amazing blessing because I think Megan, like you said, it's, I kind of have this weird concoction at the time. It seemed like a weird concoction of skills to bring into the HR world, but as it turns out, if you know, recruitment really is marketing. I think we've all known that for quite some time, but it's really kind of hitting its stride, I think, in these in these last last year and I think even more cool things yeah. are gonna start coming out in the next few years. And so when I when you're able to combine, you know, the passion of helping people develop brands and help show their value and get consumers excited about something, um, but then if you're able to do that as connection to people's jobs, which is, you know, it's where if you spend eighty percent of your life, you should you know, you should always be passionate about your jobs. And so if you can take your your existing skill set and then add it to a new skill set, which I was able to do by entering into the HR space um, and, you know, starting an employment branding group uh, at, back at Conexa, now IBM, working our RPO group. I've touched assessments. I've touched our uh, compensation groups. I um, am now in town acquisition. Um, I've just been able to, to be in a world that I don't think I would have ever been in if I would have stayed right. in the agency world. So that's been... Mm-hmm been awesome to use that to help people connect with and find what they're passionate about and, and, and how they make their money in, in their own lives. And just really Excellent. briefly, when you talk about the agency world, what is what is that specifically? Tell, tell us a so little that, bit more about so that. So think Mad Men, right? So I, my very first job when I got my degree in was, uh, was mass communications and advertising, and my, my job okay. was to project manage um, advertising campaigns. Uh, build, you know, websites, build advertising, put up billboards, um, do social campaigns. That was where that was where my life started. Um, and you guys, as you guys know, that's so correlated to what recruiters and talent acquisition folks have to do, um, kind of in their world. And and that's why it made so much sense for me t- to move over, especially as employment branding was kind of coming into its own. Uh, and, and you and I have a similar trajectory, but I started off on the recruitment agency side. And Perfect. got more involved in digital and social media and marketing now. So there you go. We've got kind of. I love it. it yeah, yeah. So it's funny how that so, works. Hey, Abby, do you have a favorite ad that you recall that you worked on that uh, that you recall fondly that you want to share? My my favorite campaign that we ever worked on. Yeah. This is pretty typical. It was a pro bono account. Um, I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. Many of you are probably like, where's Lincoln, Nebraska? But it's a great, amazing little 300,000-person city um, right outside of Omaha. And we have this amazing children's zoo there. And I got the opportunity to um, – I was pretty young at the time. Um, I had the opportunity to help kind of – we rebranded the logo, um, changed the slogan to learn firsthand, and, and the logo was a little hand that was kind of tailored to look like a little peacock. And um, I did this whole campaign. We did this really fun – campaign where we had kids were able to go through like grocery stores and find little clue cards about oh, some of the neat. animals that were at the zoo That's and so they got cool. yeah they got tickets to go to the zoo and we just we did a whole bunch of fun kind of grassroots things within the community to re-promote the zoo 
Um, and the zoo has grown amazingly over the past few years, but I think rebranding it was the first step, and, and that was just a ton of fun to do because it was it was local, but it was it was kind of something that I remembered from my past, and so that was the one that kind of hit hit your heart mm-hmm. a little bit, and it was so much fun. Excellent. There you go, Kevin. There's my heartfelt story for the day. No, you, I, I, I love it. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I, I do indeed. I actually come from university relations world. That's where I, where my, I, my mark background is marketing as well, marketing communications. But it started um, doing fundraising for the university they went to, San Jose State University here in, in San Jose, California. So nice. Uh, yeah, no, um, but very nice indeed. So recruitment is marketing, right? Yes. And and so why don't you – if the best recruitment means smarter workforce marketing, what, is that, what does that exactly mean to you and why? Share, sh- do share with us. Well, you know, for the way I like to break it down is – and, again, I think most of your listeners – I mean, we've all known that recruitment really is marketing. Um, but I think what's different about the world today is – sure, we've always kind of looked at the strategy pieces of how recruitment is marketing and, and how by hiring the right people, you, you help yourself kind of build a smarter workforce. For me, it's really saying, okay, at IBM, we have this luxury to have a, a massive company to kind of look across and say, where can we build partnerships internally at IBM? And so for us, it was, we believe in recruitment is marketing. We've always done employment branding. But we have this amazing IBM Commerce Group who focuses on selling to marketing um, teams, right? What do they have within their kind of their coffers? What products do they have that are tried and tested, that are award-winning, that we can start bringing over into the HR world? Instead of trying to build it internally within HR, how do we go out and grab best practices and pull those tools over? So it's not just strategy anymore. It's starting to pull software into HR from marketing that makes the HR people's and talent acquisition folks' lives easier, right? So um, we looked at, you know, you know, customer relationship management. We now have amazing candidate relationship management, robust email marketing on, you know, using platforms to actually build career sites and um, using live chat, right? That's something that was not used probably yeah. five years ago, and now you're finding career sites that have live chat on them. So that was yeah. kind of the big bolt, light bulb for us is we believe it, but how do we start pulling over the, the best software and technology that we can to help bring the strategies and practices to life for talent acquisition professionals? So we know, though, that recruiting and marketing go hand in hand, right? Why yep. are so many companies, brands, still doing the post and pray approach? And what do you think people, brands, need to be doing differently right now? Uh-huh. I think, you know, one of the, the one of the things we do know about um, – HR in general and talent acquisition, and I think I just we just I just got some data today from one of our market um, analysts. TA still has to deal with the same budget. They rarely see an increase in budget, right? And so sometimes your only the only thing that you can focus on is how do I use the same budget that I get every year? Um, I'm just going to have to use it against the same pieces and parts. Um, so I think that's one of the hurdles. Uh, which is you know, which is so boring, by the way. It is, right? But, <laughs> to be like, oh, get out of <laughs> right? Let's be to get out of that rut. That's so get boring. Right, you need data, right? And I think right. that's the other piece, right? Is how do you how how do I get out of that rut? And how do I say, okay, this is my budget, but I'm going to move 20 percent of it away from this thing that we've been doing over and over again? And to Megan's point, that's probably boring and not really getting us anything but I can prove that it doesn't have any ROI so I can move that budget over to here, right? So I think those two things are, okay, you have a budget to work within. How do you use data to help you understand where that budget should be allocated? And then the other piece is HR teams don't often have the luxury of trying and failing and moving quickly. And so the the, the mindset for marketing that I always want to kind of impart on people is um, – Try, reset, try again, reset. Because the second you start trying something on the web, data immediately. And so I think that's the, the piece is it's okay to fail. And I think for HR and for, um, for, for talent acquisition professionals, that's kind of scary to be okay with failing. I yeah. think it's scary yeah. for anybody, frankly. Right? Yeah. And I think there's a whole lot of us failing right now because of innovation, right? 
because maybe right. we're too slow to innovate. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's, it's nice absolutely. to know. It's nice to know that, you know, we now have data to help us when we feel like we're failing, going, well, wait a minute, we're really not. But now we need yep. to tell the story again, you know? So that, a really great really, example of somebody using data and being comfortable with the concept of potentially failing, um, you guys probably know this, is Zappos. In 2014, Zappos said, we are not delivering quality candidates. We're not spending enough time with candidates. We're not delivering value to our business partners. We need to take a step yeah. back and look at what's going on. And their their conclusion after looking at all the data and all the glut of applicants that they're getting was everything's coming from job boards. We're going to cut our entire spend of job boards and reallocate all that money into rebuilding their career site, looking at headhunting, um, looking at ways that they can better engage with candidates once they drive them to the website through, you know, more targeted recruitment marketing. That's a huge risk, but they did it knowing that it was calculated because they had data to back it up. And they were comfortable right. enough with that to fail and say it may not work, but we have enough data that tells us we think it's going to. Can you share some other examples, too, because you, you hit on a few different things that you've mentioned. I mean, I, I think finance and marketing and other divisions of a, of a business entity, they've been making those database decisions for, for a few years. They're pressed to do that because they have an they have had an immediate impact on the business itself. And the the miss has been the fact that HR and recruiting, recruiting in particular, talent acquisition, does as well. And, I mean, I know now being involved with the talent board and the candy data that I'm seeing and really neck deep in is that there is definitely companies that, that are getting it, that understand that there there is a business impact in making those, mm-hmm. those shifts and those investments in different kinds of recruitment strategies that make a difference. So, can, besides the Zappos example, can you share some other evolving talent acquisition strategies that meet today's needs that you're seeing? Well, I, you know, I know that Kevin, you're probably you probably know about this one too. I, Lockheed Martin, um, and especially yes. when they're when they're focusing on their military recruitment pieces, they actually use live chat because they know that they want to handhold those people, right? And they really, they're interested to get them in. They have the skills that they want. So we're going to give you kind of extra kid glove treatment. We want to Mm. be there and available to answer your questions. Um, My husband's, you know, ex-military, and I know his transition from from the DOD into the real world was not seamless. It was not fun. And um, to have something like that, to have a recruiter available to you via live chat would have been Huge that's for him. It, was, it didn't I mean, exist then, yeah. but I think yeah. that's another great example of company taking existing technologies and using it based on what value does it deliver and who right. the target audience that I'm talking to. That may not work for you know another brand, but it, it seems to be something that Lockheed Martin feels is going to work for them. So, I mean, a little bit more on the same topic, what are specifically then, let's get a little bit deeper in here, what are the digital marketing activities recruiters need to deliver on today? Oh, my gosh, there's there's a host of them. So if you ever talk to a marketing person, they can bore you for hours. Like, William Tim yeah. and I did a, get a really, fun, yeah, we we did right. a really yeah. fun chat on it. In the first half of it, he was saying, if we believe recruitment is marketing, let's talk about what marketers have access to, Right. Right. Um, and so it can range anywhere from – and think about – the other thing to think about is put your consumer's shoes on. It's something we always tell our clients is think about your experience as a consumer. Think about all the Absolutely. places that you get touched by by consumer brands. Those are things that are options to you as a talent acquisition professional, right? So email marketing, landing pages, career sites, live chat. Um, retargeted ads, which we all, um, when they first came out about 10 years ago, people were a little iffy around them, but it's, right. hey, if you, you know, if you visited, um, for me, it's Amazon, and I looked at a specific pair of running shoes, I go to another website, there's a good chance I'm going to see an ad for those running shoes mm-hmm. because they're recently mm-hmm. targeting. Um, it happens all most, the time. All the time. And most people yeah. will say, man, advertising is kind of a pain, but if you're going to advertise to me, at least do it do retargeting because it gives me advertising that I actually care to see and that may benefit me, right? Um, You have, obviously, Facebook ads and LinkedIn ads. Um, You know, you guys had a chat with, um, I can't remember the gal's names back in, I think, early December 
where they talked about um, they were recruiting people based on their, you know, their what they're saying on Twitter and what they're interested in on Twitter. Um, reporters use that all the time for sources. Instagram, mm-hmm. if you're, you know, if you're yeah. a designer, you may want to look at what what's on someone's right. Instagram to see what they're interested in. Um, there's just there's so many aspects that are available to you, um, and and it really you can go look at you know go Google marketing 101. You'll be shocked at what you can kind of learn and what's available to you by just understanding what what pieces are available to marketing professionals. And it mm-hmm. is multi-channel and dynamic. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Indeed. You use you, you hit on you, you use the word consumer, and I know that. So many companies, at least those that are making those progressive changes in their recruitment marketing and just recruitment strategies uh, around the globe, the big and, com- big and small companies alike, they, there's, a, there's a mind shift of how I view the candidate, right? So okay. I've, if I view the candidate as customer and consumer, that really changes. And that is a marketing mindset. It's a sales mindset. Um, it's a business Absolutely. mindset. And, and those organizations, I mean, I know, you know, one of the, 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 the uh, uh, multi-year winner of, of our awards, which is, again, a data-driven research, but the Capital One, they, mm-hmm. it was a, it, and it was a long fight internally. And I know companies like this are yeah. still discussing today to really get not only executive leadership on board, but the rest of the talent acquisition team, HR, and just the fact of saying, listen, who was our primary customer? And it wasn't. Yeah, candidate for for a long time, and finally that that change management initiative that just kept steamrolling and gaining steam, it it, it, it transferred and it really changed dramatically how they they recruit and retain talent to view them as customer. Do you are you seeing that movement even more so, Abby, out there? Oh, absolutely. I remember writing on a a post note and I I kept it. I think I wrote wrote it back in on it in like 2008 it's super faded and 2008 seems not that far ago for me but it it is um (laughs) candidates are consumers i wrote that on the post-it note and i've kept it always and i think you'll see i i I bet if we google that we would find a bunch of you know articles or at least tidbits about it because when i enter into when i enter the doors into my ibm office every day i am still a consumer right I still expect, yes. um, you know, seamless experiences, and I expect personalized experiences, and I expect relationships. Um, and so, I think that as people start making that mindset that we don't we don't turn off our consumer brains um, when we enter into the workplace, um, yes. that is a huge step forward. And and it's not just the recruitment process, right? We're seeing it in. Um, the, you know, onboarding solutions that are being made yeah. and the learning learning platforms and, you know, how you do performance reviews, the, that consumer mindset and, and how we need to treat candidates like consumers or employees like consumers, it's kind of like a B2E world, right, uh, business to employee, if you will. Um, as that starts to become more and more um, kind of commonplace thinking, I think everyone will be better off for it, Right. Oh, yeah. Totally agree. Now, now I, I love all this. I want to get a little bit more tactical for our audience especially. Tell us a little bit about what the first steps are that organizations should be taking or could be taking to create a differentiation, right? Creating mm-hmm. and marketing that real employer brand that drives all this engagement we're talking about. Do you have a couple of quick kind of first steps if we've got people out there um, who just don't know where to start? You know? Yep. Well, I think when it when it comes to employment brands, I feel like hopefully most I hope most folks out there feel like they've got some piece of employment brand. But if you if you don't, there's some new you know there's some interesting companies out there that are looking at employment branding at, from a big holistic perspective. But there's also kind of this push for like really quick implement brands, so like quick pulses of of trying to get some authentic messaging about what it's like to work at your company. Um, so I think the first step is just make sure that you have some sort of value proposition, right? Something that's true and authentic about why somebody would ever want to come work for your company. I think that's always the first step because that's in yep. any brand mm-hmm. management, you have to deliver value and you have to know your target audience. So if you have value deliver, that's a good. Then start thinking about your, your target audiences. And for us, it's I have IT. 
And within IT, you may have pockets of target audiences. I have my marketing team, and with marketing, there's pockets of audiences. So you have to kind of think about it like that as opposed to consumer world. We think about it a bit differently. But your, your target audiences are the, the job families that you're hiring for, right? So that's a step. Um, the other piece is make sure your career site is usable, Right, we we know our friends um, yes, at the town board and the in the candies, but <laughs> yes. everyone is going to go to your career site, whether you like it or right. not. They're going oh, to your career site, right? Oh my god! They're make sure they it's mobile, it's mobile friendly. <laughs> <laughs> make them mobile, right? Um, and then start thinking about how do you actually start creating and nurturing relationships, right? There are email marketing tools um, out there for you. You know, for us, we just launched a brand new CRM system called IBM Connect the Lead Manager. We built our consumer-grade um, email marketing tool from IBM Commerce has built that into that CRM system so that people, so that you can get at that email marketing. So you can nurture people. You can put them into nurture streams. You can send them to landing pages. Um, so you're building these kind of proactive talent pools as, as opposed to mm-hmm. our favorite reactive, oh, my God, I have a rec open. How do I get it filled as quickly as possible? Um, you know, we did this great, fun uh, video on the streets of Boston where we asked, people on the street. So oh, awesome. if you are being recruited, how do you want oh, to be treated? It. And you know what came out of it? I want what? to be treated as a human. Build a relationship right. with me. Woo. Get to know me, right? And right. so I think right. I think that's what consumer marketing is all about is, is how do you build a relationship with, with the consumer? How do you deliver value to them? How do you make them fall in love with your brand? It's the same thing. You have to figure out what value you're delivering who you're delivering that value to with your target audience, and then go make friends with your friends in marketing. Make friends with marketing. Love they can it. help you, right? I know. They're, they're not the enemy. They're actually They're not. They're amazing. Yeah, they're right. amazing. <laughs> so I don't know, Megan, if that's helpful, but I, I think there is, there's is. just some, yeah, no, it is. Yeah. some things we forget about that, you know, we get stuck in all the mire of our day-to-day jobs and we forget, who are we talking to again? Why do they care about listening or hearing right. from us? Right. So hey, we're down um, our last couple of minutes here. We are, oh, yeah. And I just, real, it did, it did. It always does. But before we jump to the Twitter chat, real quick, though, and, like, um, we've been talking about companies and talent acquisition teams and on the organizational side, but what about, real quick, Abby, job seekers, what do you recommend for job seekers when it comes to differentiating themselves today in the marketplace? So my, the, the first piece is, is be open to new opportunities. I just read a piece of data that said that more, more and more candidates are moving away from the industry they worked in and the specific yeah. job titles that they worked in, right? So be open to the fact that you're not a resume. You are, you are a bunch of skills. So don't worry about the job title. Worry about your skills, right? And think about that when you're using your, you know, your LinkedIn page. Um, the other thing is make a decision how you want to use your social profiles, right? So many people get their LinkedIn looking amazing. They put all their skills in. They write kind of more of a headline instead of using some crazy job titles that their company gave them. But then they forget about their Twitter accounts, their Facebook accounts, their Instagram accounts, their YouTube accounts. Decide how you want to utilize those or not utilize those, right? Because whether you like it or not, recruiters are going to look at them. And and it's a great tool, so figure out how you want to use them and what story you want to tell. Um, Right. I think think that, you know, those are kind of the three is be open, kind of get your head wrapped around what your social digital reputation looks like, and then think about yourself in terms of skills, not just job titles. Good stuff. Great advice. Great advice. Thank you, Abby, so much again for being on, and thanks again to IBM Smarter Workforce as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. I think we should just thank you guys. You're welcome. Look forward to seeing you soon, and let's take this party over to Twitter and continue the conversation. Absolutely. Thanks, Abby. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Okay. Twitter chat time. <laughs> 